I have to admit, I love dogs, especially when they're puppies. Those tiny, semi-sharp teeth, the mischievous glint in their eyes, and, oh yeah, don't forget about the puppy breath. But, as with all things, puppies grow. And, depending upon the breed, if they're not trained properly, they can wreak absolute havoc in your home. Today we dive into lessons learned from the SEC and how it's having a huge problem controlling its now fully grown crypto puppy. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Barely Legal and Web3. I'm your host, Jamelia Greer, bringing you the latest in Web3 every week with a legal twist. So hold on to your digital wallets and let's get into it. Many years ago, when I lived in Connecticut, and was just about to graduate from Yukon Law School, I bought a Weimariner puppy. Yes, the Weimariner breed is well known for their bright blue eyes and their silvery blue coat. And as puppies, they have this super cute yet sturdy look about them. I named my puppy Yongshu. Yongshu is Chinese for brave warrior, and boy was he brave. He had this boundless energy, and he seemed to be able to whip through my house in the blink of an eye. Did I mention I was six months pregnant at the time? I mean, he ran both me and my house to the ground. Weimariners, by nature, they require meticulous training, consistent discipline, and loads of exercise. He was nothing like my family dogs, which were an English Mastiff and a Chocolate Lab. Let's just say he was in a class of all his own. You see, the thing is, any dog especially challenging breeds like Weimariners, need clear, consistent guidance. It's not just enough to love them. They need structure, clear boundaries, and most importantly, an understanding trainer. In the absence of these, you don't get a well-behaved pet, you get chaos. Now let's pivot to the world of crypto. You see, the crypto industry is just like a young, vibrant puppy. It's new, exciting, and full of potential. But as it's grown, so have its challenges. Regulatory bodies like the Securities and Exchange Commission have found themselves in a position much like a first-time dog owner trying to manage a challenging breed. Instead of clear guidelines, mixed messages have been sent. Instead of understanding and guidance, there's been a heavy-handed approach. Shout out to the stoner cats, too. I remember when Yongshu was just a few months old. I decided to teach him the basic sit command. Weimariner puppies at just a few months old are super agile and not easy to control. I was super intimidated. So one day I'm standing there in front of this jumping puppy ready to play, and instead of giving him a clear, concise command, I started wavering, telling him to sit down. Then I said stay, and I think I also probably just said sit. It left him confused. He would often stare at me with those puzzled eyes, trying to decipher what the hell I wanted. Until finally, he just didn't give a damn and he did what he wanted, which was usually something wild. This reminds me of how many crypto projects feel today. Without clear guidance from the SEC, they're often left trying to interpret ambiguous directives, aggressive settlements that we see in the news, and they're let down some paths that later they realize were not the right ones. In both cases, clarity is essential. Just last week, two NFT projects faced SEC fines for selling unregistered securities, and they settled. It's so easy to point fingers at the industry, but shouldn't the blame also be on the regulator? I mean, after all, in the absence of clear rules, a defined pathway to implementation, and some support on compliance, how is the Web3 industry to navigate? It's so much like my experience with Yongsha. I realize now I wasn't at fault for his being energetic and wild. He was just being a Weimariner. The onus was on me, as the owner and the trainer, to provide the right environment, tools, and training. Just like the crypto industry needs a regulator that understands its nuances, embraces its potential, and provides clear, practical guidelines. Now, back to Yongshu. Because as he grew up, he became larger and stronger and just simply smarter. I mean, these dogs are amazing. I I tried to address his slight barking problem one day. I'd tell him off for barking at the mailman, and the next day I'd laugh it off because it seemed cute. 
But my inconsistent responses did not curb his barking. Instead, it intensified. He didn't even understand what was acceptable behavior. This same inconsistency plagues the world of crypto. One day, certain practices might seem acceptable, and the next, they're suddenly not. This inconsistency doesn't just lead to confusion. It creates an environment of uncertainty and hesitation, and it really puts a damper on genuine innovation and growth. And that's not the worst part. You see, as Young Shu grew up, I knew I wasn't able to train him. He was too big. He was too defiant. And frankly, I started thinking that he knew way more than I did about the way things worked. As the days turned into weeks, I quickly realized that Yongshu's energy was insurmountable. My house, which was once neat and organized, was now littered with remnants of shoes and books and ripped up furniture. No matter how much I tried, I could not reel him in. It was evident that I, as a dog owner, wasn't equipped. I didn't even have the strength or the knowledge to give him the structured environment that he so desperately needed. One evening, after a really tough day at law school, I made the heart-wrenching decision to return Yongshu to the breeder. It was really tough. It wasn't that he was an inherently bad dog. He just wasn't in the right environment with someone who understood his needs. Now, the breeder graciously took him back, provided him the training that he needed and the structure required. I mean, I guess that guy knew what he was doing. In time, he found his forever home, a loving family that was well-prepared to give him the discipline and the care he deserved. You see, I think the Web3 industry is in the same boat. It's at the same crossroads. All this innovation is just bursting with potential and energy. But we need clear direction and an environment conducive for growth. We face challenges from regulators who are overwhelmed, just like I was as a pet owner who had no idea of how to nurture and guide this extremely rare breed. The potential fallout? If U.S. regulators don't provide the clear and supportive framework that this space needs, innovators are just going to find a new home somewhere else, like Dubai or Singapore. They're going to take their innovation they're going to take all of the benefits of this technology and go somewhere else, somewhere else that has clear guidelines and supportive environments. And just like Yongshu, this innovation will flourish, embraced by those who understand its nature and its potential. And unfortunately, it will just leave behind those that couldn't adapt in time. We're really at the dawn of new technology. And the question remains, will we adapt and guide or will we let politics take control and have the opportunity slip through our fingers watching as it thrives elsewhere? That's a question for you all to answer. But until next time, stay safe out there in those crypto streets. Take care. Hey there, listeners. If you enjoyed today's episode and have a moment, I'd love to connect with you. Find me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Just search for Jamelia Greer. Drop me a line and let me know what you thought of the podcast today. And hey, if you're navigating the world of Web3, building out your dream business, and considering the powerhouse benefits of a global structure, check out ByteBow at ByteBow.io. That's B-Y-T-E-B-A-O dot I-O. I'd love to support you on your journey. Until next time, keep pushing the boundaries and stay curious.